Camelia here welcome back to my channel welcome back to a new video although uh, we have today I think more than 30 degrees here in uh, Germany and in my sewing room I think maybe 26 I am uh, busy with sewing um, garments for colder days this is mostly what we have here but today in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, swimsuits and uh, the way I am working when I'm making my uh, swim wear well swimsuits that I'm using only a little bit in the summer <laughs> so um, if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing to my channel and give me thumbs up every thumbs up that you give to my videos or um, comments that you are posting under the video that you are watching is always helping the video to climb a little bit higher and to be seen by uh, more people so uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to do that um, in the video from today I'm going to share with you um, I made uh, some uh, swimsuits last year and I made also this year and I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about general stuff that I'm doing when I'm sewing swimsuits and the patterns that I uh, used for these ones they are the um, Azure swimsuit from uh, designer stitch the zara swimsuit from uh, sew over it and uh, diane from uh, jolly the one with uh, but uh, from diane from jelly i uh, used the add-on to go with the original pattern and i will talk about a little bit in a few minutes so um I'm going to put also the links in the description of the video that if you are interested in them so I'm going to talk you a little bit through the the I don't know options of each of these patterns and then I'm going to say what I did and what I'm doing you know to make them like I want so the first one is the azure swimsuit and is this one well here is with the clips because it, I don't know if you know this pattern uh, it's, it's coming with uh, options of um, a swimsuit and also for separates and uh, the cool thing about this one is that you have this is this red piece is actually a separate piece and this is uh, the main piece and the cool thing about this is the fact that you can combine of course um, here I have a black piece that it could easily go with this one but actually I'm going, just going to put a clip here that I can show it to you I don't know if I, I I think I have pictures from the you see like this so you can make a bunch of uh, of these pieces in this case with this uh, um, main piece I can go with also with green or with fuchsia or with white this is really really cool about the azure uh, swimsuit and this one because this one was the first one I made this pink one and it was made to go with the with the black overlay really really nice and of course the cool part about this swimsuit you can make one uh, main piece and then you can make a bunch of uh, the overlays and then you can change every time and you have every time another uh, swimsuit but if you are making the separate uh, from or the, the the bikini option let's say from the azure uh, swimsuit the cool part is that you have um, you have even more possibilities for uh, changing the um, upper piece so if you make a black bottom you can make a bunch of these ones and then you have a bunch of swimsuits of bikinis so the cool part about the um, azure swimsuit is the fact that it has of course um, cup sizing it has also um, a bust dart it's a little bit difficult to see here it has a bust dart and that's going to give a really nice fit also in uh, bigger uh, cup sizing so you are not relating only on the stretch of the lycra um, this uh, so this is the azure swimsuit a lot of possibilities because of those um, overlays that you can change and you can make a bunch of them depending on the main color that you have on your uh, on, on your main piece on this let's say the other swimsuit that this one uh, this one i made uh, last year and unfortunately is a little bit too tight for me at the moment i'm going to keep them because maybe next year i'm going to be a little bit thinner and then i'm going to fit them better <laughs> okay uh, the one that I uh, wore a lot this summer actually it was the, the only one that I wore 
I had also a black one, but that one was uh, ready to wear this holiday. I wore that one also a few times. Um, the polka dot one. This one you saw for sure on my Instagram if you're there and uh, I'm going to put some pictures I think on this side from it. This is the Zara swimsuit from um, So Over It. Actually it's a really dark uh, blue. And this light is light blue with polka dots but it's a, it's a navy blue with polka dots. Really really nice. And uh, actually I wanted to make the swimsuit and I was looking for a fabric. I did have some on my, uh, in my stash, but I was looking for something to fit the pattern. And I saw this polka dot and I was thinking, well, this is perfect for this style. Uh, the Zara swimsuit from Sew Over It is coming also uh, only in their um, stitch school. So you'll be able to get the pattern only if you are subscribing to their stitch school, but they have some, you should, if you are interested, they have, uh, so I think they have at the moment, I'm not sure, but they have sometimes uh, really nice offers for that. And I think a minimum is for three months, but don't quote me on that. Uh, take a look on their website. I'm going to put a um, link here in the description. Um, the Zara swimsuit, as I said, uh, is, part of their stitch school on Sew Over It. The cool part is of course that it's coming together with a video on uh, on the, the microphone is pulling it on my dress. Uh, the cool part is that it's also uh, coming with a video with all the steps to make the swimsuit or the bikini. There is also a bikini option so with a bottom and then with a, a bra part. Um, so in in that uh, in the video on the stitch school you have uh, you get all the steps also a little bit fitting um, uh, ideas and uh, how to solve different problems. There is also one chapter where uh, you can see uh, how to add a little bit of uh, support here at the um, at the sides. It's a really nice. Uh, uh, very informative piece that I think uh, by adding extra lining you can give a little bit of uh, room to your boobs or not <laughs> so uh, or a little bit of support you know really really uh, a nice chapter that one so uh, again a lot of in information and help in the video in the on the stitch school also uh, I did something a little bit different and uh, in the stitch school you have so in the video there uh, the swimsuit is of course is lined and is sewn in such a way that the inside is really really clean. Almost all the seams are enclosed, very nice, very clean. But the thing is that um, I want, I wasn't sure about the size and I really didn't want to make uh, a 12 for it. So I made it a little bit easier let's say or faster or I don't know, but to have more possibility to, uh, to adjust um, like uh, hips and uh, waist to take in or my problem my problem my worries were about the the shoulder uh, straps that it they will be too long or too um, short and there is an option to make this also with sliders and rings but i did not have those so it was really important to get the the length of the straps immediately well but the way that they are using in the video you have a very clean finish but you cannot you cannot adjust that if you are making uh, this um, this option without the slider so i changed a little bit the order and i'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute. Um, Size-wise on the Zara I um, used my usual 10 size, let me think, 12, 12 for the bust and for the waist and the hips I used a 10. That is my usual size that I'm using in Sovery patterns. But when I uh, I basted the sides and when I put them on, put the swimsuit on, I noticed that I had a little bit on the side here. On the side, the back was a little bit too um, I don't know too wide. Let's say I had a little bit the fabric because on swimsuits a lot of uh, times when you add the elastic on the legs 
on the leg opening or on the armhole opening when you are adding the elastic of course the fabric is going to pull in a little bit and to hug your body better but in this case I realized that the extra fabric that I had here on the side seams at the hips it was on my butt or not on my butt but a little bit higher it was not something that the elastic is going to resolve so my um, solution to that was to move to take a little bit more from the back and I kept the front because the front was good but I, I took a little bit larger uh, seam allowance let's say from the back and that gave me a really nice uh, good fit on my uh, bottom my hips um, so that was a change and also from basting and uh, trying the swimsuit on I realized that I had here it was really gaping so also again it was a little bit too much to be something that only the putting the elastic uh, to solve that so I took a little bit like a pinch here on the sides and it was uh, you see in the pictures the fit is really really nice um, so this was the Zara what I did in the Zara and um, in the azure swimsuit and for me patterns that they are cut on the fold are usually not working especially if it's something that is so body hugging like a, let's say like a really uh, like a fitted dress or fitted dress a little bit fitted dress uh, or um, like a swimsuit they are not going to work on my body if they are on the fold so I need to have that scoop and I always need to make a sway back adjustment and to do that on a swimsuit mostly they are cut on the back on the fold in the back so I needed to make a swimsuit uh, a swimsuit a sway back adjustment so that means that I need to add um, seam in the center back and also I needed to have a little bit more scooping at the spine down at the waist so this is how my Zara is looking after I was done with the with the swimsuit and I put it on I noticed that I still had a little bit of ha hollowing or a little bit like too much fabric it was not against my body here at the um, at the center back so I just scooped a little bit more with my serger and that's why you can see here some extra 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 threads um, the same I did on the um, on the azure swimsuit so this is something that I always consider if I want to make a swimsuit in one piece that I need to have a center back seam to be able to um, shape the swimsuit really nicely on my back the difference here is so this is the back of the azure swimsuit the difference here is that the back is different the two pieces the left and the right so on this one I had to make sorry because the pattern is really uh, looking very messy but this it was uh, stashed away with the green here you see I added um, so I cut the pattern on the center back and I added the green is the seam allowance six millimeters and also here I don't know if it's possible to see this is what I made the the sway, the sway back adjustment on the back and it's looking a little bit high here but actually if you look on this piece is somewhere here at the waist so here because the pieces are different the left and the right um, I had to work on two pieces to make separate uh, sway back adjustment of course the same size and uh, adding the seam allowance what you see here with the green and that gave me a really nice uh, fitted uh, piece on the back um, so those were the fitting adjustments for the Zara swimsuit the sway back adjustment a little bit more scooping at the center back uh, took in here a little bit and the hips adjustment to have it even nicer ha hugging my body uh, the lycra that I used is uh, something like it's a medium lycra it was uh, in an offer I think I paid six euro a meter so actually and the lining maybe was three or four so a swimsuit like this let's say maybe cost me in materi materials maybe 10 euro or something like that so very very cheap um, the third pattern that I uh, worked this uh, two uh, last summers as I said was uh, Diane from uh, from Jolly and this is the one with uh, the add-on so the, the jolly has uh, one piece the front is in one piece and the back has the back is also in the original with this hole 
and but the the front it has also an add-on with a wrap over like this you can see and another option with a little bit similar to this with a with a knot with a tie and a little hole oh there is no hole i think there is no hole in the jolly but there is a tie so i made for lisa last year i made the wrap and the knot one with a tie but uh, this year she said that uh, and i noticed that she liked the the wrap one uh, better so i just made her this year two uh, wrap ones and for this one i measured her uh, what was important to measure was uh, the bust the waist and the hips and also the the torso uh, length so from one shoulder to the crotch and then to the front and, via, and again back to the shoulder and that's a really really important measurement and i noticed uh, again i said as i said last year i made it and this one uh, this year again that measurement is very important to be uh, followed in the size chart from jolly because it's really very accurate and i got a really nice uh, uh, fitting swimsuit from that uh, for lisa because she's tall but she's really um, skinny she's very uh, small um, i used one size for the width and another size for the length i did not use the lengthening uh, lines on the jelly pattern they have uh, different lengthening uh, lines because i wasn't sure where to lengthen how much so i was thinking you know i'm just going to use one size for the width and another size for the length and that worked really really nice last year and this year worked really really nice so uh, i think if you are like me and you don't know which parts to to lengthen in a pattern just use the pattern that the size that is uh, fitted for the length actually that uh, you need to have um, the only adjustment that I need to make for to make for Lisa first one I made this blue one this was the first one that I made and I noticed that here the back here is a little piece it's this one that is this is the center back and here is coming to the side I noticed that it was a little bit uh, wavy here I think it's really difficult to see and this might be because maybe I did uh, not stretch the elastic uh, good enough or something like that but actually I was thinking that because as I said Lisa is really small also in the back I was thinking afterwards that maybe it was better to take just a pinch of fabric here the center back like so going to show it to you from the inside because from the inside it's really easy to see one second so this is the back piece let's see this is the back piece as you can see this little piece here and my solution to avoid any gaping in further in the second swimsuit was to take not really at the center back a little bit away from the center back I just made a pinch like a small dart and i adjusted the pattern as you can see here i just made it i think it's six millimeters it's really not a lot it's just a little bit but it made a really really big difference and blending to nothing here at the seam that is attaching to the bottom of the of the swimsuit so it made a really really uh, big difference i'm going to put here some pictures and you'll see it's really really nice i'm really proud of my of my uh, little adjustment with that being said so that was everything i want to um to share a little bit how i'm working with uh, with with uh, this uh, swimwear fabric first of all i'm using my sewing machine and my uh, serger to construct them i don't use my cover stitch machine for elastic i'm just using my uh, the zigzag on the sewing machine um, the elastic that i'm using is this one is that uh, rubber elastic or naked elastic and i have here two kinds this is really like a rubber this is a little bit more smooth let me show it a little bit from as you can see it's really like a plastic and this one is really like a rubber the only problem with this was that um, with one of them i cannot remember which one i think it was the black one it didn't really want to to fit really nicely under the presser foot so i hate when things also are not working like i want them to work so i just used i remember that i had this uh, teflon foot that i got uh, when i bought my machine it was in the in an extra box with uh, things that i got from them so um 
or they call it actually a non-stick foot. So I use this and actually it's working really, really um, easy. The thing is that I needed this only on the first pass on the elastic, the first uh, attaching of the elastic to the fabric. So when I put the elastic on the edge and then that the, that the foot needs to walk on the elastic. But then on the second pass, when this is turning, then I could use uh, my normal presser foot. So a non-stick uh, or a Teflon presser foot for your machine is really great when sewing uh, this kind of elastic. I used uh, normal polyester thread and uh, also my standard normal um, thread on my serger. I want to say that, so this, the, 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 the Jolly uh, swimsuit, and I don't have here the old ones from last year, I need to say that Lisa wore them a lot. She had uh, last year, all the year, she had swimming lessons at school, so she wore one of these, or the other ones that I made last year. She wore it uh, every week. It got a lot of wear and it's still in really nice condition. No uh, threads that uh, broke or I don't know. So normal polyester thread, this elastic, works really, really great. About the stitches that I'm using when I'm sewing, um, swimsuits. I know that uh, there are a lot of uh, times the instructions are saying to use use a zigzag stitch for your side seams or use the stretch uh, stitch, that lighting bolt stitch. Well, I need to say what I am using. So, but the first advice that I can give you is test, test, test. Test the stitch length test the stitch width, test the elasticity of your stitches. Um, all these are sewn with, uh, with a stretch needle that worked really nicely. I have no skip stitches, very, very nice. A 75 uh, stretch needle, so not a jersey needle of a uh, ballpoint needle is called. <laughs> and uh, in, the, uh, in the surgery, I even have a universal 80 needles and I had no problems with skip stitches there also. The, the stitches that I'm using when I'm sewing my swimsuits, they are uh, mostly, uh, so if, uh, let's say on the Zara, I just cut my uh, pieces from the fabric and also the same pieces again from the lining. In this case, the inside of the lining of the upper part is the same um, polka dot fabric, the outside fabric, because of the tie, otherwise you could see the uh, lining. So in this case uh, it's a little bit different, but for the rest I cut the same pieces what I'm cutting from the outer fabric, I'm cutting them also in the lining. And then I have the possibility uh, to either uh, serge them with a three stitch, a three uh, thread uh, overlock stitch to base them together, let's say, or use a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine to base the pieces together and then I can go further with my construction. Um, sometimes I'm doing the zigzag, sometimes I'm doing the uh, three thread overlocking is really not so important because in the end everything is going uh, to be sewn together, but it's really important to have the pieces uh, really nicely uh, and the same, you know, that they are not shifting. Um, for the side seams I usually use my serger but I could use, uh, easily use also a straight stitch on my machine and then to search everything with a three, three thread overlock stitch is also acceptable and is working and is really okay. And by having, I mean, if you are sewing with your straight stitch on your machine, just give a little bit, not a stretch, but just a little bit of, uh, keep it tight, you know, that is building a little bit of stretch in the in the stitch, even if it's a st straight stitch. On, um, let me see, on this one, I have, for example, here the back piece is, uh, is like this, it's stitched with, uh, uh, with a straight stitch, and then it has, uh, I overlocked it with a three, three thread overlock stitch, and it's really enough stretchy. I mean, if this uh, swimsuit should stretch even more than this, that means that the swimsuit is just a size too small. It's not normal or well fitted if it needs to stretch really, really, really a lot to fit, uh, to fit the body. So consider straight stitching with uh, um, a three thread overlock or if you have, uh, or you can also make only a two or four thread overlock, a normal overlock stitch on your serger to put the pieces together. 
Um, for the elastic, I am using, uh, of course, the zigzag stitch on my machine. And I just want to show you, I don't want to get naked here, <laughs> I, uh, how I'm using the elastic. Again, uh, let me see. So when I when I'm stitching the elastic with a three thread uh, with a three thread with a with a normal zigzag stitch, I'm always so let's say that this is the edge that I need to um, put the elastic on. I'm putting the elastic, and this one is a little bit wider, is a one centimeter, I think. I am stitching on the. I try to stitch a little bit to the middle or more to the inside here to this side to put my uh, um, zigzag stitches and then when I turn it like so I'm coming with the sti uh, again with the zigzag close to the fold here or to the edge so not the edge of the garment but again to the inside of the garment here because like that your uh, elastic is going to be really nice and put imagine if you are going if you are to stitch more to the outside the elastic is going to flip out so stitch it always to the inside and then you get a really nice and um, stretchy elastic. Um, something to keep in mind when you are uh, choosing your stitches for the again this is a very important step to test the stitch width and the stitch length on your zigzag stitches to see what is actually working best for your uh, fabric in combination with the elastic. I found that let's say what uh, I was um, seeing in the stitch school, the, their stitches did, really didn't match my sewing machine or my uh, how they were looking on my own fabric. They also say test, test, test and I think this is a very important advice and something really important that you need to do test the zigzag stitch. Um, again, coming back a little bit to the stretch stitch, I uh, that lighting bolt stitch, I would not advise to use that on your um, swimsuit because I think that stitch is so dense it can really damage the fabric and uh, it's really not necessary, as I said, it's not necessary to have so much stretch because again, if you need to stretch your swimsuit like crazy to get in, that means that your swimsuit is actually too small. So I will not use that. Uh, and to be honest, if you need to unpick a lighting ball stitch, I think it's better to start again because that is almost impossible to unpick and I'm pretty sure that the fabric is going to be damaged. Uh, something else that I would not use uh, is a zigzag stitch to sew my side seams because they, a, a side seam that is going to be stitched with a zigzag stitch, so like a really zigzag, you can use a very uh, shallow zigzag, that's okay, but a zigzag that is really sharp it's never the the side seam is never going to lie to lay nice and you always have the possibility that the the thread is really visible when the suit is really stretched on your body so i'm uh, my favorite are or um serger stitch for thread overlock for the construction or a straight stitch and finished with uh, the um, three thread overlock for a little bit, uh, you know, to be secure that if the first stitches are popping, you will always have the other ones. Um, and I think that's it. I think it was something else that I wanted to mention, but I cannot come right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, the oh. Sewing the elastic. Another thing on sewing the elastic, what I wanted, really wanted to say. On some patterns you have, uh, they give the, um, the length of the elastic that you need to use. Or they say, you know, for the leg opening you need, um, I don't know, what is this, let's say 30 centimeters. Cut your elastic on 30 centimeters, make a loop and then put it on your swimsuit. I think it's really not necessary to make it so difficult. The way I'm doing when I'm putting elastic on my swim, uh, swimwear, I'm just working with the bulk of the elastic. <clears throat> and I, I'm starting, and when I'm starting to sew, I don't know, doesn't matter which point, I'm just leaving a little bit of a tail that I can grab the elastic and to help it a little bit to start. And then I'm sewing all the way around, not stretching, not pulling, but just keeping it tight that is sitting well on the fabric while it's going under your machine. Your machine. Uh, the only place where I am pulling a little bit, well like maybe 
make it like three centimeters shorter than it should be is uh, at the leg opening at the back where it needs to cup a little bit under my bum I always stretch the elastic there a little bit and then when I'm coming again to the, to the end I am just uh, so I'm stopping uh, stitching when I'm almost where I started I'm cutting the original tail I don't even butt them together I'm just sewing there you know close to it and then when everything is getting turned for the second pass of the stitching you really don't see anything so I think it's really really much easier if you work with the the whole bunch of the elastic and then you cut in the end what you need sewing one on one just giving a little of a tug and then at the bum at the back a, a little bit uh, of uh, stretching and then you get also uh, by doing that you get let's see it's more visible here on the Zara a little bit of uh, of gathers and this is something that you should have you know that you don't need to have a you don't want to have a gaping part there under your bum <laughs> um, yeah so that's it yes this is uh, this this was something very important because i did see on some patterns that they say cut the elastic make a loop and i think it's really not necessary to make it so complicated so this is what i had to say about uh, my way of uh, making uh, swimwear it's getting really really hot in here maybe i should go outside using my uh, zara swimsuit swimsuit <laughs> To enjoy a little bit the sun i hope you have some uh, you have some news from this video and you got some uh, interesting uh, tips and tricks on making on your own swim swimwear i highly recommend it to make it it's taking just a little bit of fabric maybe lesser than a meter and uh, a little bit of elastic and it's really fun it's very fast done because it's uh, it's such a small piece so uh, thank you so much for watching if you have any question questions put them here under the video and i'll do my best to answer them don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me thumbs up if you like it and i hope to see you next time bye